We are working on an old train split system here. Heat pump, very old. I'm gonna check the belt for the outdoor fan motor. See how loose it is. It looks like it was a little bit loose because the unit is freezing up. Here's our large outdoor fan motor. You can see the wheel spinning back there. The condenser coil. There's a little bit of play in this belt, as you can see. So, check the belt for any cracks or anything like that. Might need a new belt, but at least I haven't fallen off. Guys, we're looking at this old General Electric unit here. As you see, it's been around for a while. The compressor down there. You see that old style of reversing valve that was used. <laughs> but this is a giant pressure switch, as you might have guessed. But this one is for the outdoor fan motor. And this one senses defrost. And like, like you guys would, I look at the diagram and figure out what these controls are because a lot of times something like this you don't see every day and I have would have no idea otherwise. I know it was hooked up to the outdoor fan motor to sense pressure once it was running, but once that static pressure increases because there is ice on the coil, it will cause this switch to trigger and this pressure switch. So we're going to see if this switch closes like it should and let it get some ice on it and see how it works if we cover up the outdoor coil. Okay guys, we have the ohm meter set up in between an A terminal and O terminal on this unit. That is where the defrost sensor comes into it. And unless the defrost sensor gets cold enough and closes, it will not allow the defrost relays to be powered. The coil voltage for the defrost relays comes from this A terminal that will only have 24 volts if the defrost relay closes. So a lot of looking through the wiring diagram. There's our defrost relays right there. All right, guys, I'm uh, looking at the defrost sensor now. It's a very old defrost sensor back there. You can't really see it. You see my Hillmore, uh, you see the green Hillmore uh, pipe lamp wire and right below it's the defrost sensor. That defrost sensor is not coming in and closing. So I believe it's also bad. Uh, we're checking the temperature on the coil to make sure it should be closing. The temperature right there above it, which should be slightly warmer than where it's at, 29 degrees and it should be closed already so it looks like we have at least two failures as far as the pressure switch up top and the defrost sensor it just takes a lot of time to weed through here i might even retrofit a new style controller uh, if they don't want to go back with something like uh, 